When you're a tattoo artist, you kind of tattoo what you get. I have tattooed a lot of things and mostly I have been saying yes to sort of everything because as a starter tattooer, you kind of need everything that comes in the shop. Tattoo everything. Tattoo those kanji symbols. Tattoo the tribals and the dragons and the dolphins and the roses and the palm trees. And it's your experience until you are at that stage in your career. One day you find yourself fully booked. You have so many clients and requests and then you have the ability to say no to the stuff that you don't want to do that much so you can focus on the stuff that you really enjoy doing and then you just kind of grow from that one day you'll be able to do like me i've just come to that kind of phase in my career that i actually can do that so yeah here is my list of the tattoos that i don't want to make and why Hello there, I am Electric Linda. I have been a tattoo artist for 18 years now. A little disclaimer here, I cannot speak for any other tattoo artist than myself. So this is just to show you an example of what a tattoo artist could say no to. Why do I say no to stuff? Well, I want to say yes to tattoos that I can be really proud of. And even more important is that you, the client, walk around with a tattoo that you absolutely love. But at the same time, I want to be proud of it because you're walking around with it for the rest of your life. And people might ask you, like they sometimes do, oh, that's a nice tattoo. Who made it? The portfolio is our work. Yes, so it is tattoos that we have done before, but it's also tattoos that we want to do more of. Every artist wants to make tattoos that scream out high quality and that you as a tattoo artist can be really proud of it and you as a client, you just love it. And that's because the tattoo artist loved your idea and liked you know, the design, made it by heart and la 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 la. If you want a tattoo that the tattoo artist has done like you know three four times a week and is like oh i'm just fed up with this same thing over and over again you're kind of losing the passion in it and when you don't have the passion into making a tattoo the tattoo is not going to look very nice and the tattoo artist is not going to be able to give their all into this piece so sadly, you're not gonna walk away with a tattoo that you're like, woo, this is the best tattoo I've ever got, you know? That's why it's, I think it's important that the artist loves the tattoos that they make. If not, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna be good. So without any further ado's and the blah, blah, blahs, here is my list of the tattoos I refuse to make and why. Number one is tattoos that creates a negative reaction. Tattoos that are provoking in any way. I don't quite see the art in this. I'm not judging you. If you want to get something political or negative, provocative thing tattooed on your body, then go ahead. It's just, that's what this video is all about. It's what I refuse to tattoo and why. And designs that provoke people is not something I enjoy doing. And I don't tattoo stuff I don't enjoy doing, period. It kind of goes without saying that I won't do designs that includes racist, Nazi ideas, something like that. And I don't want to go into the debate about drugs. I don't like drugs. I'm not judging the ones that are pro-drug things. It's just not my style. I don't like making art that kind of salutes a drug in a way. There's also in this category of, of provoking motives designs. It's actually something that I've got a few times on requests from clients and that is pictures of their dead infants, you know, like stillborns. That is so sad. I do feel for them and I feel so sorry for them and I would uh, I can't imagine the pain that they have gone through, they are going through, but 
even though it's from love, it's your child and they died. That is so sad. First of all, it's provoking for anyone who sees this tattoo, but it's provoking in a way that like, oh my God, that's so sad. You know, the, the kind of sense of it all, it's, it's very sad, but it's also provoking that it's actually an image of someone who is dead in the picture. That is also quite scary. I often try to explain this to the client, like this photo of your dead child. For you, you can only like see the photo and feel the love of the child. But if you would wallpaper the whole photo on your wall in your living room so that everyone who sits at the table for Christmas dinners you know and movie nights uh, you have your neighbors come over for Yahtzee whatever and they are gonna see this photo every time for the rest of your life do you want that you're gonna create reactions from the people you meet all the time for the rest of your life it's so understandable that you want to keep this memory and you want to keep this love of course, but keep it in another way. This actual image is nothing that you want to show for the rest of the world, for the rest of your life. I don't think that in 20 years, you're gonna want to look at that photo still over and over again. I think you're kind of past that phase. You just wanna symbolize this love in a way. You wanna symbolize this child to make a tattoo a nice memorial for this child is to make a more like a symbolized uh, design. Maybe the cliche, like a little baby angel up in the clouds. It could be flowers, it could be a text, it could be a poem that you like, it could be a jewelry, just something else in the whole light world that kind of connects you to this love. So I would say maybe more like celebrate the love in doing a memorial that is and nice to look at you know something that you could hang up on that wall so that the neighbors and the family and everyone who joins and sits at your table and has dinner that they can see this image and like oh that's so nice because that's something you might want to put on your body instead images that symbolizes someone's negative past is never a good thing i once had a client who had been in a relationship uh, which was kind of violent and very negative and I mean she got out of this relationship and she wanted a tattoo that kind of symbolizes the breakup she wanted a bird that is flying out of a cage and you kind of get the idea like why she wanted that because she is the bird and she's just like flew out of this cage you know she was imprisoned inside but then I had to tell her like but do you really want to celebrate the cage by tattooing it on you do you want to bring that cage with you all the time for the rest of your life or isn't it better that you are totally free as a bird and you don't even see the cage anymore it's it's gone so we made a bird totally free just flying in front of a nice sunset I believe it was and a beach because that's what she was like yeah okay well yeah a beach she visualized this bird that she has become and where it's gonna fly and that's what I think you should do is like focus on future happiness instead of negative past because you don't want to bring that with you on a tattoo for the rest of your life number two on my list fantasy creatures I know, I mean, isn't like every tattoo a fantasy creature? Well, the top tattoos, uh, kind of like the dragons, yes, they are fantasy creatures. No, they're not real. <laughs> I, as I said, I'm not speaking for every other tattoo artist. I'm speaking for myself because I do photorealism. That means I tattoo from photographs. I love that. It's been my passion since I started drawing. To be able to capture the real life and putting my own passion in it, my own edge to this realistic photo, that's what I love doing. And it's hard to get a nice photo of a real dragon. And I don't want to tattoo the same Game of Thrones dragon every time. Phoenix birds, unicorns, angels, and lastly, the gods slash goddesses. I really don't enjoy making uh, Thor and Odin, you know, fighting or gods and demons. If you have a seriously amazing photo of it, like from a movie, TV show, whatever, and it's a still photo that is super amazing, yes, then I don't even care what it is, if it's a dragon or a demon or an angel, uh, as long as the photo is really, really good. Or if it's an old painting, I love those. Uh, if it's an old painting, I can do angels and everything, Jesus even. The fantasy creatures are 
kind of a challenge and that's the challenge that I don't enjoy that much and when I don't enjoy it I just don't see that it becomes a super amazing tattoo and I want my clients to be super amazingly happy and I want to be super amazingly proud and then on number three on my list I have specific placements on the body that I actually refuse tattooing because the skin is not the same all over the body some places are extremely like flexible skin some places are thick and soft some are more always like hard and bouncy even so feel the skin on your body check out the differences on the ribs your knees the armpit your calves, the feet, behind the knees, the neck skin, oh, especially here. It's awful to tattoo. Yes, it is. So I actually, like nowadays, I say no to all ribs. If it's not a full upper body, yes, I will I will tattoo the ribs as well. It's a part of a back piece or it's a part of a front piece, then I will do it. I cannot make my photorealistic designs there that will look well when you stand up, when you wave, when you walk, when you're on the beach and tanning because as soon as you move, your whole area here is, is moving with you. And since I do mostly the realistic stuff, at least I always say no to portraits on the belly area. As I said, again, disclaimer, this is my opinion. After tattooing 18 years, I've decided I never tattoo portraits on their belly, ribs or lower back. Portraits on those areas do not look good because you change in that area because yes I can make a, a nice looking portrait that looks good on the photograph we take after the session but it won't look as well after 5, 10, 20 years because your body is gonna change a little bit over time and the belly area the rib area I don't like how that area changes and I think it's difficult to make something that really looks good in every angle feet I do mostly big stuff anyway, uh, so yeah, if I tattoo your whole leg sleeve, I might do the top of the foot, that's it. So the sides of the foot, the toes, they wear off, you know, because you use your feet, you walk on them all the time, so it's not gonna stay well, it's not gonna stay beautiful, and I wanna make beautiful tattoos. And then there are hands and fingers. I can tattoo hands if it is part of a sleeve. Number four on my list, the styles, tattoo styles. As I said, I do photorealistic styles. I do also do some other styles like making my own kind of semi-realistic new school with a fine line, you could call it that, maybe um, highly detailed new school with a realistic touch maybe. That is kind of cool. I also like doing comics. This Batman sleeve that I made, it was so much fun. The traditional style, it's never been one of my favorites. I do love it on people. It looks amazing. Tattoos that actually look like tattoos. It's not my specialty. Custom script letterings, it's not really my thing. I had never had that kind of gracious, nice line work. It's not been my specialty. Geometric, same thing. I, I'm not that into thin lines. I have never been. Either I like bold lines or I don't like lines at all. Like line work, dot work, black work. I want it on my body as well, but it's not my style, so it's nothing I do. The Oriental, the Japanese, uh, the dragons, again, I don't do dragons. The traditional Japanese tattoos, I don't quite get or understand the principles and the rules behind it because it represents something and it means something. I don't want to make something that I don't understand entirely. There are so many artists out there in the world, in this country, in every country that specializes in their Thing. Some love making dragons and angels and unicorns, letterings, new school, old school, geometric patterns, uh, Japanese. There's so many cool styles out there and if you want something in those styles, you should really do that research and find that artist and what they love doing, you know, and have them do it because then you will have a tattoo that is gonna look amazing. I want a tattoo like that, that someone just like, oh my God, I want to tattoo this on you. It's gonna be totally amazing. Number five on my list is copying other tattoos because I don't feel like I'm a tattooer or a tattooist or whatever you call it. I call myself a tattoo artist, which means that every tattoo I make 
is designed by me. As a client, you can get into a consultation with me and have a picture of a tattoo and saying, this is something similar to what I want. Show me what style you want, the color use, the size, the images that were used, uh, techniques that were used to show like an illustrational image of what you want. Yes, of course, bring it. Show me what you want. And then we'll take that as an inspiration and we'll make something new. Then you have the times where I actually copy exactly what you brought. You didn't bring a tattoo picture. It could be an original painting or it's a photo of someone. Because I, on paintings or photos, I try to copy as good as I can, but it's still gonna be my interpretation of it. But that's the difference in copying tattoos and stealing tattoos because we're not stealing a tattoo. I'm just copying an image which has nothing to do with a tattoo, but I'm making it into a tattoo and it's uniquely made for you to fit you. The most popular YouTube video I have, the 20 worst tattoo clients thing. There was one guy who commented, I'm gonna read this. Imagine going to a restaurant and you wanna get something from the menu and the chef says no, he wants to create something else. It's my money, you make me what I want. That's his comment. And I can totally kind of understand where he's coming from. Like you expect that you go to someone and you're paying money to get something. You wanna get what you want. In, but you don't want someone to make you something that they don't wanna make. How about imagining that you're going to a fancy restaurant, you're gonna spend money to eat something really good. You want a luxury meal, right? And you get served a uh, kind of a reheated TV dinner from the store, like next door to the restaurant. That's kind of how I look at copied tattoos. I think that every tattoo should be customly made for you, uniquely for you, because you are the one that's gonna carry this art. So that's what I refuse and why. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you watched it all the way to the end, why don't you just subscribe? And um, check out my Instagrams, of course, uh, and the blog, and the newsletter, and blah, 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 blah. I'll put everything below. Just take a quick look in the description box before you leave my channel. And I hope to see you in my next video, which is gonna be, no, I'm not gonna tell you. You'll just have to see. That was it for this time, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Oh, 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 oh,